welcome to the Nick Vespa Read Along. Uh, continuing on with our reading of Death of Superman, I'm your host, Mike Rader. We are now on to part four, The Adventures of Superman, number 497, the last issue pub- published in December of 1992, just like our first, our previous three. This is written by Jerry Ordway, and the art is by Todd Grummet. Um, I think this is great. We, we pick right up with the Superman in Pursuit of Doomsday. Nice little page there. But it gets even better because we have a great splash page. He, that only is the In Pursuit. He catches him and sends him flying. So now Superman is taking the offensive. Well, across the bottom, you still saw we had Mitch. He is still worried about... Um, his parent family, his mom is still in the baby sister in the fire of the house, and he's still calling for help. Unfortunately, the league is not able to do anything. They are still down, um, and Doomsday is still a problem. Um, he kind of figures out Superman does as he's fighting Doomsday here that he's not flying, but he's jumping rather. So he takes a calculated risk, and he decides to plant Doomsday using his momentum into the silt. Of a nearby lake. And I love it. It's a great tactic. It's perfect. This way, Doomsday has nothing solid to get the propulsion with. If you've ever hit into a mucky lake, um, <laughs> unfortunately, the, our local lake here where I live, my dad lives there. That's not the bad part. It was great growing up like that. But it was a very soft bottom and mucky. And if you got a little ways out from our dock, you would sink a good 12 to 24 inches in the muck. Um, and it's hard to shoot up out of that. There's nothing to push on. So, makes it great. It's, you know, it's perfect. Um, that takes us back to the story. We transition back to the house collapsing and the fire. Mitch, mom, baby. Bloodwind comes in and makes a save. Just enough time for Superman to swoop through and grab the family. Um, we see that the, the league is pretty beat up. They're all being carried away by emergency personnel. Um, Bloodwind denies any help and he just transports away um he teleports himself away and we get a little word of warning from guy gardner here he says uh you better not wuss out superman and you better put doomsday in a pine box or i'm gonna have to get off this gurney and come trash you both he says this through swollen eye gritted teeth but man i love guy gardner love him He's my favorite Green Lantern. I just think he's the best. Um, I always thought his haircut and the vest was kind of dopey at first, but it just really grew on me, and I really ended up liking him. So, um, with all this, he started, Superman's kind of thinking. He's like, yeah, but how do I stop this doomsday when the combined efforts of the Justice League couldn't do the task? Like, he doesn't know what to think about it. Um, huh. So, Doomsday gets himself free from the muck, and he comes flying up in the air, and it's not amazing height, because, again, he's coming out of water through the resistance, uh, in my opinion, and the muck. So, but there's an army chopper overhead. It's going to come in. Not happening. Doomsday sends it flying, but Superman then redirects the missiles that were going to get shot, that got blown awry, right back at Doomsday. So, that kind of sends Doomsday to the ground. He then um, lands right by a police precinct, and Superman lands right on him. I like this picture, too. I always thought that was, I always loved that when that things would happen, like the dive bomb type move. So he sends, but that doesn't stop Doomsday for long. He comes right back and puts it on Superman. Um, They're trading blows here, back and forth. Superman, uh, Doomsday then, there's another chopper, they get put into danger, Superman saves them, and you think, great, that means Superman's now distracted, things are not going to go his way, but in comes Maxima, she taps him on the shoulder, (laughs) sends Doomsday flying, says she's craving this battle, there we go, Uh, meanwhile we flip over to see what's going on with uh, Lois, we haven't seen her in a bit. She's got to get Jimmy because they got an assignment to do. And Jimmy's been taking a three-hour lunch. And you think, why would Jimmy be taking a three-hour lunch? Because he's filming the Turtle Boy show! I... <laughs> the Turtle Boy show. It's fantastic. Jimmy Olsen. I love the eyeballs on it, too. It's hilarious. So, that brings us to another panel 
we're finding out in the news, it appears that Doomsday is just on a straight course for Metropolis. Uh, and that brings us to other Metropolis residents, such as Lex Luthor and Supergirl. Um, Lex convinced Supergirl to stay there as a contingency plan. They need someone to help protect Metropolis. So she does. Um, Superman and Maxima are still fighting Doomsday. Um, her lack of concern for innocent lives has Superman chastising her in the middle of this big battle where he's almost losing. Uh, she then does not like it. So she goes to throw a punch, soup blocks it, but in the time that that's blocked, pfft, wiped out by Doomsday. So they're gone flying. They're trying to take him out. Um, Doom, Superman can barely hold Doomsday. Maxima's going to put the knockout blow on him. He's faster than she realizes. She takes it to Superman. He follows with a quick, <clears throat> quick punch to her. Smashes her with a van. She's unhappy about it. Again, Superman flies in. They're, they're just trading blows all over the place. He's kind of got a little bit of on Doomsday. There's gas flying everywhere from knocking out this gas station. Um, and Maxima's angry, so she, again, rash thinking. Pulls a telephone pole, or not a telephone pole, but a light pole out of this base. Sends sparks everywhere. Superman tries to warn her, but kaboom! We have a huge explosion, and it sends everyone flying. Unfortunately, the only person still mobile, or entity still mobile, is Doomsday. He leaves, and in our final panel, Guardian shows up on this Guardian cycle, and he says, Superman, friend, can you hear me? Was all this, was this, all this destruction necessary? And Superman basically says, uh, no. No, it wasn't. And then he just switches to like another thought, like, I gotta stop him by myself. That's what he decides. So I feel like that does not seem to fit together, and that's really surprising for me, because I always feel like Jerry Orway is a better writer than that, but uh, that kind of ends the issue, and I feel like it ends in a funny spot. Um, not a really funny spot, but on a funny note. It kind of sours you. So this one got a 3 out of 5. It got a 3 because I really like Superman's tactics at the beginning, fighting, Doomsday, um, his thoughts and how he's trying to do it. I do. I don't really like when he thinks he's getting dirty on his phone, but maybe he feels the other members are a distraction because that kind of was what caused them more destruction, more innocence. Um, that closing dialogue was clunky and not too great. But Turtle Boy, Jimmy Olsen, uh, I feel like pushes this this uh, issue into a saving solid three out of five. So. There we have it. We are over halfway. Um, we're on the home stretch. We have just a few more issues to go. We have three more issues left. We made it through the halfway point, and we're running along pretty good. We've had nothing under a solid a three out of five level, and action is building. We're seeing the strength, the tactics, the everything, the concern from Superman, everything with Doomsday. It's building to be a great end of the story here. So. Join us again next time for part five of the death of Superman.